Yo, 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 what is up? It's your boy, Finn State with CB83A coming to you for another banger. A banger of a show. What's good with y'all? TDR in the building. What's good with you? Let's get this thing cracking. I see you punch that like button on your way in. We about to go up. It's a Friday night. I'm feeling good. Feeling great. Got an early trip tomorrow, but we're going to get it in tonight. We are getting it in tonight. Hey, let's go. Let's crank up. Hey, punch that like button on your way in. Let's get this thing cracking. Let's go. Hey, we here, man. We here. Let's go. Hey, they creeping. We back. Pittsburgh Dolphin in the building. Let's get this thing going. Three in the building. Hit the like button on your way in. It's going to go up tonight. Hey, no YouTube train. Real deal, holy feel. In the trenches. We did that. Let's go. Hey. Hey, I heard two in the live. Heard two is getting right. What a wolf pack at. What a wolf pack at. Hey, so shout out to the homie TDR in the building. Let's get this thing going. It's your boy Finn State with CB83. You just could have called me on the Miami Dolphins Roundtable. If you didn't catch me there, I'm here. I'm here on my channel. We're live. We're going up tonight. We got a special show. We're going to do a little background, a little background on what CB does, how he got here, how he did that. What's up with y'all? What's popping? Uh, TDR, the first one in the building. We got to go up for the homie, man. We got to go up for the homie. Let's get it. Crazy. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to the homie TDR. He says, I feel like I got to the mall, but COVID was just announced. What's good with everyone? Hey, shout out to the homie TDR in the building. Hey, Pittsburgh Doll fan is in the building. We are back. Shout out to everybody here. Um, man, we're going to get it cracking tonight. We're going to talk about some Miami Dolphin stuff. Uh, not a lot going on in the world in terms of Miami Dolphins. You know, some guys training, some guys doing some off, 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 out of season stuff, right? Um, foundations camps uh tyreek's doing camps uh my son's going to tyreek's camp uh the weekend the first weekend of may um two is doing his camp out in hawaii so the guys just really traveling doing some off-season stuff uh you know enjoying taking some time off i think guys are starting to ramp up now i saw Jalen ramsey put out a video about his training and how he ramps up around this time it's gonna be interesting to see but man we got a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. Um, man, it's been a while. It's been a while, man. Shout out to everybody in the building, man. We got six in the building. Um, but let's do this. Let's. So we we had a little situation, um, and I'm gonna address the situation. Um, as far as film breakdown goes, right? Um, when it comes to my film breakdowns, uh, I am wholeheartedly watching the film giving you what I see and from both perspectives, from passing perspective, from a run perspective, defensively and the trenches defensively, what the DBs are doing, all of that. Right. Um, you know, I went to, I went into a space and I said, Hey, you know, don't compare me to guys who only break down one facet of the game. That's what I said. Um, and you know, somebody took that to heart. And they needed to go run tail somebody else. You know, that's how catty, you know, that's how catty people are, right? So, you know, the other guy came in hot, steaming, mad, bothered, right? By what I said. Um, it is what it is, bro. Like, I don't, I'm not YouTube trained, right? I don't give get up here and give you fancy terms, right? I don't take notes on my film breakdowns. I can literally put on a film and show you what I'm what I'm seeing, right? I don't watch it before write notes and then regurgitate my notes when I show you the film. I don't do that. 
I also don't have other people up here helping me out with my film breakdown and like, you know, giving me a perspective from the trenches or giving me a perspective from the quarterback play. I just get up here and tell you what I see, point out the techniques, show you what they're doing offensively, trenches, pass game, all of that. So, like I said, just don't compare me to people who only break down one facet of the game, right? When it comes to the Miami Dolphins. Now, if they're doing draft prospects and stuff like that, that is cool. I'm, by all means, do your thing, dog. Um, I'm not into that. I just don't have time for that. This is not my, you know, day-to-day job. So I have a real job, you know, a family. My son's been playing flag football, so we've been traveling a lot. I got to get on the road tomorrow morning and head to the Jacksonville area for a regional tournament, a regional flag football tournament. He's eight, traveling with him, you know, getting after it. It's fun, having a good time. But, yeah, and if anybody wants to go, you know, see some stuff of maybe me playing or me uh, coaching or something like that. And I I share some stuff on Twitter too. Um, And I'll show you that right here. I share some stuff on Twitter. Uh, Let me put this here. Uh, So I shared this on Twitter. Um, And it says, you know, I'm not YouTube trained with a bunch of fancy football terms, but you best believe I know ball and was really in them trenches with my guys getting to the money. And this is a picture of me coaching. Um, So I've coached, I've played at the high school level. I've played at the collegiate level. This is me, a picture of me coaching um, at West Orange High School, Winter Garden, Orlando, Florida. Um, Corey Vereen, who played at the University of Tennessee behind me. Jog Petrie played at UCF. Will Fica, uh, I think he played at, I want to say FAMU. Uh, Albin Hart played at Tuskegee. So those are two of my offensive linemen that I coached. A uh, defensive lineman and an edge defender in Vereen. And Vereen also played, um, he also played running back too. So one of our running backs, defensive tackle, two offensive linemen that I coached. They play. They both played collegiately. Um, and Vereen actually went on to play for the Patriots, um, played at Tennessee. Uh, Corey Vereen played at Tennessee and then went on to play for the Patriots for a little bit too. So those are guys I coached, right? And, like, I, I don't know what other guys do. I don't know if they play football. I, honestly, a lot of these YouTube guys, they probably didn't play football, which is cool. I'm cool with that. Like, I don't, I don't mind. You ain't got to play football, right? This is an article of me signing my scholarship, right? This is Gino Thompson, who is now, shout out to Gino, right? Gino is currently the head football coach at West Orange High School, uh, where we both play, right? The headline says, Warriors receive football scholarships, right? This is Gino Thompson at the top. This is me at the bottom. Right. Says Chris Batten signs his football scholarship to Howard University. Uh, as his parents, Brenda and Herman Batten, look on. And back are his brother, West Orange High, High School ninth grader, Philip Batten, and Coach Tim Smith. So that's me signing my letter to play at Howard University in DC. Um, if you want to go into reading the article, says uh, two West Orange High School senior football players inked college scholarships papers last Wednesday. Tight end Chris Batten. And let me let me tell you guys a little bit about my background. So I played offensive line up until I was a senior at West Orange. So my freshman year played offensive line on the freshman team. Um, got moved up to a JV at the end of the season. Right. So I get moved up to JV at the end of the season. Um, I think I might have played. And and that summer. So when I became a ninth grader, um, played through the season, got on JV that summer, like a lot of the older guys kind of took me under their wing. Right. 
so the older guys would come. There was one person in particular, and I got to give a shout out to my guy, Dean. Dean played linebacker for us, and he was a dog, right? He would come pick me up every morning at like 530, uh, my, in my ninth grade summer, going into my 10th grade, and we just hit the weights every morning, just getting stronger and getting stronger, right? Just pushing each other. And I came in and played what? I think I played one game on JV uh, my sophomore year. And after that, um, I got moved up to play basically um, varsity. Glenn, what's good with you? I see you, Glenn. What's good? Um, so I got moved up to play varsity. Um, and then from that point on, I started from there on out. So I was a three-year starter in 6A football here in Florida, which is the high, was the highest division at the time, right? Um, we played teams like, you know, Edgewater, Jones, Apopka. And Central Florida was always competing with Miami to be the state champion, right? Um, Edgewater was the big team at the time, and um, they were good. We, I think we, we lost to them by three points my junior year. Um, and my junior year, we had a really good team. Dog, we were stacked. Uh, we had a good football team. But we came up short in a, in a few early games in the season. And it just kind of like kind of threw us for a loop, man. It really did throw us for a loop. So um, you can see right here in the article, it says uh, tight end Chris Batten is headed to Howard University in Washington, D.C. Uh, and strong safety linebacker Geno Thompson is headed uh, to Wofford College in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um Batten, who plans to major in business administration, said the highlight of his athletic career was West Orange at West Orange was his first touchdown during his first game against University High School. He also received honorable mention for the all district team and was picked to play in the senior bowl at Dr. Phillips High School. He credits his parents, Herman and Brenda Batten of Orlando, with being the greatest support during his high school years. My parents pushed me and kept me on top of my game. He said, Coach Tim Smith, Timbo, said of the future Howard player, Chris has been a three-year starter in our program, and that is not something that happens in 6A Florida football very often. Chris is a hard worker in the classroom as well as on the field, and we're going to miss him. So that's the article. Uh, my dog, Gino, shout out to Gino, who's the current coach at West Orange High School, the current head coach at West Orange High School where we play. And that's me right there, uh, decked out in the suit. My Dukes, Pops, my brother, uh, who we both play, you know, on the basketball team at West Orange, too. So I was a senior playing basketball. My brother was a freshman, and he was on a varsity team, too. So my brother was solid, solid. J.R. Black says, come on, CB, you in 5A or 4A? Y'all was not banging out with us at 6A. Oh, come on, bro. 6A, bro. We was 6A. And I'm going to show you. So we was definitely 6A. And in 6A, I'm going to tell you who was the big dog in 6A, especially in Orlando. The big dog in 6A was Edgewater High School. Um, Edgewater High School. And let me stop screen share real quick. Um, wanted to share this with you guys. So, and... <laughs> I can actually pull up stuff to show you I played football. I don't know what these other guys can do. These other guys might not be able to do this, right? Um, he said, my past spoke too soon. You were in 6A in Central Florida. I was in 6A, yes. So West Orange High School was 6A. Uh, we played the top dogs, the big dogs, right? Um if y'all want to go look at my highlight tape, this so we didn't have individual huddle links or anything like that. But in 2001, it says Warrior Football 2001 West Orange High School football team highlights. This is my team playing, right? And if we scroll um, to the end of this, or let me see something. What is that doing? Hold on one second. So if we scroll to the, let me show you this. Man, all these freaking. Um, 
all these uh all right, here we go. So this is my highlight tape right here. This is not my highlight tape. This is just our highlight tape as a team. And if you scroll to the end of it, uh, let's see right here. All right. So right there, I'm going to pause it right there. You see my name, right? Chris Batten, number 73. 11th grade this is the grade we have next to us our grade right i was 11th grader so i started every snap at left tackle my junior year right i also played my sophomore year 6a football right against some of the best players in the country because florida literally does have the best players in the country point blank period right so this is me right here chris batten number 73 and if i go to let's say this nine minute mark right so i think so this is week i think this is week two and we're going into week three so this is us playing edgewater high school um edgewater high school was the top dogs at the time right um the the best team in central florida hands down and them the popcorn were very good and this is us playing them like i said i played every single snap at left tackle y'all can go look at this on youtube my, yourself hey break it down let me know what you think about my play um so this is me playing every tag every snap at left tackle I play every snap through the season at left tackle as a junior. Not bad. So, and my quarterback, right-handed, Kenny Patterson, was a dog. He was a stud. Um, he used to throw it around. And that's why I made the transition to tight end my senior year because I knew I wasn't going to be big enough to play, like, offensive line, right? I wasn't going to be big enough to take on, you know, those type of dudes at the collegiate level. So I had to make the transition to tight end my senior year, and it worked out for me. Caught some touchdowns, uh, made some plays, blocked well because I already had the experience blocking. Um, and, you know, when it went on, I got a scholarship. So it was cool. It was cool. Um, this music was terrible. Look how bad this tape looks. So this is us right here. I'm at left tackle, right? So I'm up here, right? Up here somewhere. You can barely see me. Barely see this tape too. I think that was an interception on that play. And I'm going to have to stop it because you know how YouTube is. You know how they are. This is me right here with pass blocking. I'm at left tackle out on the island right here. This is, I'm pretty sure this is me pass blocking. So keeping my guy clean, right? That's all I want to do. Keep my guy clean. This is me on an island pass blocking left tackle. My quarterback, Kenny Patterson. Oh, good catch. Hell of a catch. Another good catch. Another good catch. So this is the right side. So you can't see me on this side. But Edgewater, so Edgewater went to the state championship this year. Uh, they actually went three years in a row. Irv, what's good with you? Just showing some of my highlight tape. Irv, what's good with you? Shout out to the homie Irv in the building, man. We didn't even go up. Let's go. So, um, I'll, hey, I don't know it. I don't know if your favorite YouTuber can show you, you know, plays that I'm playing football. They are probably YouTube trained or never played the game, right? I'm not sure, but this is B Plant. This is defense right here. 
Yo, Edgeworth got some big boys. You see these dudes? I think that's ball out, though. Pick it up. Scoop and score. Get out of there. Tyron. Big Hughley. Yo, this was a fun game, too. Fun game. Because a, a lot of the guys who played on the other team were like the homies, crosstown rivals. We would always be talking shit and get at, getting after it. Uh, it was always always fun to do that. Always always good to we ain't had no social media to get on and talk shit, but we just when we see each other, when we saw each other out or like, you know, in the mall or wherever we went, we would just be chopping it up and talking shit about, oh, we about to whoop y'all next week. This is what this is what tapes look like in 2001, 2002. This is this is what highlight tape looks like. It's crazy, right? A big sack, big sack right there. Our defensive line was monstrous. Dedrick Morrison. Oh, nice cut. We got to run this one back. Look at that. Nice cut right there. This is me in here somewhere uh, getting down here trying to block one of these linebackers. This is me probably here or here blocking one of these linebackers. Gap down backer. Gap down backer. Right? We take our – and that's – we ran the wing tee in high school. Um, so it was like our, – our assignment was like gap down backer typically. Um, or when I got to my senior year, it was like, oh, you're running, you know, a deep crosser or something like that, or a drag and a flat. It was always like off play action. Um, my man said, yes, sir. North Florida football will the corn huskers 305 at speed, speed, speed. I got you. Um, there we go, making making a few plays. And this was a good game, man. I think it came down to the wire. Look, this is me right here at left tackle. Um, see if I can back it up a second. So this is me right here at left tackle. Um, right here at the bottom, blocking the edge defender, pass pro. Uh, put a little move on me. Uh, quarterback getting loose and make a play. I like it. He kind of he kind of put a move on me, but I was I I was able to jump back though. Uh, push pull, couldn't make the play. Our quarterback was good, man. That's Kenny. That's my boy, Duval. He's out there making plays, man. Oh, nice. Right over the top of him. I like it. I want to see that one again. We're going to run that one back. We saw this one. A little slant. Give it to him. Let him go. Oh, man. What is this doing? I wanted to see that one again. Our defense is playing this game, but uh, they scored a lot of points. But yeah, man, this is bro. Yeah, y'all can go back and watch this. This is fun. I, I like watching it. Um, I like watching myself on film. That's fun. Um, but yeah, man. Hey, been in the trenches, played football. I'm not YouTube trained. I'm I'm not gonna give you a bunch of fancy terms. Um, uh, there's just no reason to do that. Uh, I'm also. I just get up here and show you what I see. I'm not going to, you know, give you a bunch of notes and jargon. Um, he said, he said, how we, how we know you, how we know you, you have a helmet on. Um, and we already did that. We did that. So 73 is me because that's me on the roster. Right. And we did this uh, where we looked at the roster. Right. And we saw me, 73, 11th grader. And we also looked at um, the newspaper clippings of me signing a scholarship. 
if if two guys sign a scholarship, if only two guys sign a scholarship, those guys played a lot of reps. Like they played a lot on the field. Um, to to get a scholarship, you have to be a for the most part in most programs, you got to be a starter and you got to play a lot. You got to have a lot of time, right? And let me show you that because I don't think I, dang, I don't think I shared it. Um, but here, here you go. So you see my name on the screen right there where it says Chris Batten, 73. So if you want to go look at this, run it back, Warrior Football 2001, Chris Batten, 73, 11th grader. That was my 11th, my junior year. So feel free to check that out. Feel free to check that out, Jets game. He said, he said, it's you. It's, it's all good, bro. I know. I know. Um. But shout out to everybody in the building, man. Hey, what hey, what questions? What we got, man? What we want to talk about? Because I know um Tua's hey, Tua's in the lab, right? Um, what y'all think about this draft? What who what's we hey, I need a question. I need a question. We talking draft, we talking um signings we talking to a training what are we talking about this there's not a lot going on right now there's just no, no not a lot of news um dre in the building what's good with you dre um he said what's up folks what's good man dre i just got you know got down got done giving him the rundown you know we we did a credential check I hope I hope your favorite YouTuber is doing credential checks and he can tell you where he played ball at. Um if he say if he said he played ball, right? If you say you play ball, you should be able to, you know, tell people where you play ball at. I got plaques, I got awards, I got all of that stuff, all the accolades. Uh it was fun. I enjoyed it. Football's fun, right? Um so yeah, man, when we look at I we just got done doing a mock um with with the Miami Dolphins roundtable, and it was kind of it was trenches heavy. I feel like I felt like you know a lot of offensive line um, for sure, right? I think the offensive line needs to be kind of solidified because I'm tired of seeing them do shuffle. I mean, like yeah, it's it's to the point now where it's like we have two or three guys go down every year. If that's going to be the case, then you need to just add more guys in the room that have quality abilities, right? Um, quality they are able to make it happen um Trey says jpj or la two if they both there are there at 21 i like la two um jpj i'm not so high on but um you know i'm cool with taking an interior guy i, I don't as long as you get an interior guy um because i think tackle solidified i think we need to get some guys who can play right now and I think an interior guy would play right now. I don't know if the Dolphins have that in terms of value. I don't know if they value the interior offensive lineman to where they would use a first round pick on. And I think that's my situation with Greer right now and Mike McDaniel. I just don't know if they use that pick on an interior guy, right? If anything, you use that pick on a guy who's on an island, right? Like, and I always say this, guys who are tackles, who are out on an island by themselves, premium position, right? Edge defenders, premium position on an island by themselves, right? Corners, premium position, right? On an island by themselves covering the best athletes in the the world, right? Um, Receivers, premium position, touch the ball, have the ability to make plays, score touchdowns, premium position. Interior guys, not a premium position. Center, I know centers touch the ball a lot, but you just went and got Brewer. I don't know if you use the resources that you used on Brewer and then go pick up a guy like JPJ to play center, right? And if you're not going to use him as center, you still got to swap those guys. So either JPJ is going to go to center or Brewer has to go to guard. You're still using the pick on a guy that's not in that premium position. Um, now, inside linebacker, I don't really consider that a premium position, right? And I say that because you already have a David Long Jr. 
You already have a Jordan Brooks. Um, if you pick a guy there, he's going to be a platoon guy. He's going to be, you know, put out there to get reps every now and then. He's not going to be an every down guy, but that's defense, right? So I understand that's defense too. So sometimes defense is going to be, hey, this guy spot plays here, this guy spot plays there, and we work it out like that. And I think Weaver will take that approach um, because he's played in the league. And I think he understands that it's important for you to keep guys fresh uh, and keep guys running in and off the field just to switch it up and give the um, give the offense different looks, right? I feel like you've got to give the offense different looks. And we got 50 in the building right now. Do you, boy, a favor, punch the like button. Um, J.R. Black says, uh, trenches, trenches, trenches should what we are all manifesting. And I agree with you to some extent. I think trenches are important for sure. I mean, I play, like you guys saw, I played offensive line. I played tackle uh, and then played tight end. So I understand the importance of it, right? Um, the the offensive line needs to be better down the stretch. And it's also on Mike McDaniel, too. And I said that on the, the Miami Dolphins roundtable. Mike McDaniel has got to call the plays tailored to keeping his guys heavy on their hands um, and keeping the, the defense guessing, right? You can't be so focused on passing the ball that you aren't versatile and you aren't using the entire field. The best offensive coordinator is going to use the entire field whether it's the flats, whether it's inside the box, outside the box, stretch plays, gap plays, gap schemes. So you got you got so many different plays you can run. You got trap, you got power, you got counters, right? You got inside zone, you got outside zone, you got sweep, you got stretch, you got toss, right? You got jet sweep. You got so many different plays you can use in the run game. I just didn't see the versatility from us. Um, and I think the year before last, last year, not this past year, but last year, I think we were much more versatile in the run game, much more versatile. And I think that's because we had Jeff Wilson, who was kind of healthy. We had Moster who was somewhat healthy, right? But you had a switch up too. So you had like a speed guy, and you had a power guy, right? I felt like this year we only had speed guys and that we lacked the power aspect, right? We lacked the gap scheme uh, player in, in the running back room. And that's why I think Mike McDaniel kind of trended towards using all the zone scheme plays because of the type of backs hit he had. Jeff Wilson Jr. was kind of hurt for most of the season. Brooks got hurt. Um, so we just can never kind of get that power guy into a rhythm, which was tough. Um, just gang says Dolphins should go D tackle at 21. I don't think it happens. And this is why I don't think, uh, D tackle at 21 happens because we signed a lot of guys first and foremost. Right. Um, and that gives us the ability to go best player available. And I don't think the best player available uh, in this draft uh, at 21 will be a DT, right? Um, DTs, unless you're getting an Aaron Donald type of player, like why, are, like, bro, we don't need DTs to be sack guys or Hall of Famers. We just need them to do their job, plug the gap, make a play every now and then in the pass game. You don't need a stud at defensive tackle. Um, you can get away with a platoon using guys and and certain reps. You don't need an Aaron Donald or Chris Jones. It would be nice, right? It would be nice, right? But you're also paying those guys. And the Chiefs, like these teams who have them, are, are kind of struggle paying them, right? And we struggle paying Christian Wilkins. They, he priced himself out of Miami. And I'm happy for Wilkins to go get his money. But I'm also happy the Miami Dolphins – wasn't willing to commit to that type of money because it was too much. It was just too much for a defensive tackle, right? So defensive tackle, you don't do enough in the game to me to warrant $28 million a year. That's just, that's a lot of money. Um, so you can, you know, deploy those guys in a platoon, let them go do their thing, get a guy in for a couple reps, 
get a guy in for a couple more reps, switch it out like that. That's what I didn't like about Fangio is that he had Christian Wilkins and Zach Tyler playing, damn, 90% of the snaps. It's like, damn, bro, you got to rotate somebody else in. They're getting tired, bro. Like, that's why we aren't getting the rush we need. That's why we aren't making the plays in the run game because we're tired. You got to get those guys some rest, get them off the field, and let them, and let them, let them get charge themselves up so they can get back in. Um, my man Glenn says we need to get two offensive linemen and a defensive lineman and a wide receiver. I, I like that. I like the two offensive linemen. I feel like now you can never really have enough offensive linemen. The way we went down. Uh, so Connor Williams, when Teron Armstead, um, everybody was hurt at one point. Robert Hunt, Hunt, Hunt was hurt at one point. Um, Eichenberg played. Who else? Man, we we was just down. We were just down players. Um, so the way this offensive line is made up and the way they get hurt, I do think you need to get a few like good players. Like you get maybe a couple in the draft and you get some un, you know, some undrafted guys. Or you bring in some free agents too, some guys who are just um looking for another opportunity, some veterans. Um, but we need to solidify the offensive line. I just want to see five guys play for most of the season like the same five i want to see the same five play for 80 percent of the season and the other 20 percent can be a one guy out here right and then maybe one guy out here right maybe one guy out for two weeks uh, and then that other guy comes back and then another guy may go out for two weeks or something like that I don't want to see three guys down for the season. Bro, what? We can't afford that. We can't afford it. Uh, we can't. Um, J.R. Black says we need Unicorn 2.0, damn it. <laughs> I hear you. We do need it. We do need some. We need it. That Unicorn. Um, your biggest need is inside linebacker, both offense and defense. Interior lineman, you mean? Um, okay, so yeah, I think you mean interior lineman. That's what you mean by IL, uh, both offense and defense. So defensive tackles and guards and centers. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you need some guys, but you also sign some guys. Like you got Isaiah went back. Um, I definitely think you need it on the offensive side. Defensive side, I don't think you need as much as you think you do. Uh, in terms of being in the trenches. Um, I think they could draft a defensive lineman. I think they could draft an offensive lineman. I, I think that's going to be a given is offensive lineman, right? Defensive lineman, not sure if they're going to draft that in terms of interior. Now, an edge defender, like I said, premium position. Guys out there by himself on an island. So I could definitely see them doing that. Definitely see them doing that. Glenn says, stop. Brewer is not good at center. Can't pass, protect, too small. No, he's not. Glenn, stop it with these takes. Come on, man. He He's good enough to pass block. Man, go, go watch him. Go watch him. He did well against us. Glenn, he did well against us. And we got to really I, – I, I know you felt like we had a pretty good interior def, defensive line. Christian Wilkins, Zach Seiler, Raekwon Davis. He he did well enough for them to win the game against us. So we can't say that. Uh, Glenn says, Miami only has two picks in the first four rounds. Don't have luxury to go for best available. Need to fill needs. Um, I think the Miami Dolphins could trade back. I think that would be the play. We got to keep in mind, though, Mike McDaniel has never had um, – He's never used the first round draft pick. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So he's never had a first round draft pick. Will he be able to use this one? I don't know. We'll see how Greer and Mike McDaniel feel about that pick, whether they choose to kind of stay put or uh, push back. But I would definitely push back and pick up more players because you need you need guys who can play right now. And I feel like this is a pretty deep draft. So if you trade back maybe into the second or third, get a couple picks, you're going to get two to three players that can be beneficial right now, that could get NFL reps right now and spill guys, which is give them a rest, right? Um, 
and just start developing into the player they need to be um, in order to be NFL players. And I think you have some really good veterans on the team. So I think you got to get a couple of young guys in that could be molded by these younger guys, by these older guys, I mean, and just kind of help them along. Because I think we got some really good premium players at edge, at corner, right? So <clears throat> if you get some guys in there at those positions, they're going to be able to mold those guys. Be able to mold them. Um, Glenn says, you van not pick player uh, first and second round this year sits on the bench. Um, you cannot, yes, you cannot pick a player um, that sits on the bench. And I said that. I said, whatever you do, right, the Miami Dolphins, you cannot pick a player who is going to red shirt. I do not want to see that. You can't do it. You can't afford it. You need guys who are going to make plays, right? You need the guy who's going to play this year. You don't have time to red shirt, guys. We need players at this point. Everybody on the 53, whether it's special teams or whether wherever they're getting playing time, we need them to make plays that are beneficial for the team. That's what we need. And we don't need guys sitting on the bench. We need those guys developing, getting reps, and making plays. There's Cam Smith should have paid more reps this year. Point blank, period. We didn't – our secondary was not deep enough to where he wasn't playing. It didn't make sense to me. And I think, honestly, that's why Fangio might be out of here is because he just did a really poor job of adapting to what we had and, and getting guys opportunities. Um, <laughs> Glenn says, Miami brought in a bunch of potato chips on the D-line. Most of them are camp bodies. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think you might be surprised. I think at least three to four of those guys are going to stick and – we're going to end up rolling with those guys, and they're probably going to be pretty damn effective because they're going to be playing within the system, right? We got to understand that defensive line, defense, period, is about just playing your assignment, right? If you do your job, right, win your individual battle, then ultimately the defense can win the war. But if you're not winning your individual battle, right, it's going to be tough and, you know, we're, we're going to drop the ball in terms of winning the war. So I think you might be surprised. I think some of those defensive linemen will stick, and you'll be like, damn, some of these guys turned out to be better than I thought they were. Raph, what's good with the homie Raph in the building? YouTube dumb 15, what's good? Um, why do Dolphin fans want a wide receiver in the first? Because um, wide receivers are flashy. Wide receivers are flashy. They're fast. They make plays. I can understand um, some Dolphins wanting a wide receiver in the first because when you're picking ble best player available, sometimes that best player available is one of those wide receivers, right? And we got to think, we aren't going to have Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle forever. Jalen Waddle's coming up on his deal. Tyreek's already paid. But maybe we get ahead of the Jalen Waddle situation you add a receiver, and maybe you move Jalen Waddle down the line. I don't want to do that, but for the better of the team, right? I mean, you got to kind of get ahead of these situations, right? And that's my thing about the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are always kind of late to the table when it comes to these negotiations. So I know people fall in love with players. I love Waddle, too. I love him. He's a great player, a great kid, tough kid. Uh, makes plays, um, but the Miami Dolphins want to get ahead, like drafting a wide receiver, moving somebody like Waddle, that would be something they would do. Not saying that's a play, but that's – and I don't know why people want to draft a wide receiver, but if you want to draft a wide receiver, you better be thinking like that, right? Um, the ghost of Richie Incognito is needed now more than ever. Richie Incognito, Bully Gate, my goodness. What is going on, man? Um, center guard we get from Philly. We got from Philly, man. We picking up people from everywhere. Uh, everybody getting contracts. Um, DM might be it at 21. Chubb ain't been that good, and he's coming off ACL. Chubb's been solid, bro. What are we talking about, huh? What? Man, you killing me, bro. Chubb's been solid. He's been our best, one of our best edge defenders for sure. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man?
Come on, bro. Yeah, hey, just gang, tighten up, man. Tighten up. Um, Glenn says Greer pick Waddle, Jalen, and Noah Armstead in two in the first round. Uh, not who was Arn? Not yeah. He picked Waddle. He picked Jalen Phillips. He picked Noah. Um, not Armstead. He picked Tua. Um, Armstead was free agent. Uh, Jeremiah Harris, what's good, man? He says, I are right about the poor coaching. We Dolphins put this way. If you have the Ravens or Chiefs coaching, then you see good improvements. All right. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Douglas Anderson, Greer can't afford to drive two players back-to-back years that sit on the bench. You're right about that. You are right about that, Douglas. That's bad for his resume and the team, hence the position he can drive the player to start or play a lot. Wide receiver, edge, uh, linebacker. Yeah, I agree with that. Wide receiver, he's probably going to play if we pick one in the first round, for sure. If he, if we pick a wide receiver in the first round, we best believe that he is going to be positioned to be number three, wide receiver three. Edge, for sure, um, premium position. Um, you don't know if Chubb and Phillips are going to be ready. That guy might get some time. He might get some clock. Linebacker, yeah, you got some veteran guys there, but you can rotate those guys in. You can definitely rotate those guys in. Um, yeah. But the Miami Dolphins are kind of putting themselves in a position to to draft for need and BPA. Um, I think they're going to have to adjust the trenches for sure. I think wide receiver, cornerback would be a luxury. I think edge uh, linebacker could be like need holes filled, um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I know. So Austin Jackson, I, you meant Austin Jackson. All right. Um, J.R. Black, Chubb had better numbers than Garrett before injury. People just be saying anything. Chubb was balling. People need to understand how each injury hurt us. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's, you know, people will say that's excuses, right? Um, that's what the Wolf Pack will say. They'll say, oh, you got excuses. Everybody was hurt. Everybody has injuries in the NFL. But when you have, you know, three starting offensive linemen out and, you know, two edge defenders, two of your best edge defenders, you got your cornerbacks rotating in and out because they're banged up. You know, X not X is 100 percent. Holland wasn't 100 percent. It's just it's tough. Right. Um, So you got to figure that out. Um, Glenn says if Miami Dolph, if Miami does not pick edge, that tells me they believe at least Jalen or Chubb will be back at the beginning of the season. I, I agree with that. Um, but they did pick up Shaq Barrett, right? Um, they did pick up some linebackers, some guys who can kind of assist with that pass rushing ability in the event they need to blitz or do something like that. So, you know, take that into consideration too, that they did pick up some guys on free agency. Um, but like edge is one of those positions where you want to start drafting every year. Corner is one of those positions. Wide receiver is kind of one of those positions. Tackle, you know, is one of those positions for sure. Offensive tackle. Um, so maybe they go that route. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, give me a couple questions, man. I'm about to get out of here in a little bit. I got to get on the road guys at 4 a.m. My son has to be in Clark County at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. It's a two-and-a-half-hour drive, so I got to get on the road super early. Um, we got to hit the road, drive to Jacksonville area for a flag football tournament. Um, he put himself to bed at, like, 8.30. He knew what time it was, um, and my daughter did. So, um, yeah, man, what, what we got question-wise? Um, let me see. Jeremiah says McDaniel has to learn from his mistakes and allow Tua to play his best football instead of controlling too much. Because when you do, it shows a lack of trust. Plus, the team won't be as good as you think. And I agree with that. I think uh, you're kind of spot on, Jeremiah. I think you got to kind of allow Tua to take his lumps, let him play through shit. Like he's got to be able to run outside the pocket. He's got to be able to pull down the ball and slide and make plays and get off platform. Like. It's like, come on, man. You got to you gotta do that. So um, you can't box him in. 
Tua is not the type of player you got to box in because it's going to limit his ability. He's going to be closed off and he won't be able to make the plays necessary to help the team win the game ultimately. So I think he's got to let him go. You, you've seen him stay healthy. Now you just got to kind of let him rock and roll. Um, Glenn, good question. When is your next podcast? Hey, I'll be going live again soon. I'm going to crank up, man. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. I know it's been a minute since I went live. Probably so busy. Um, also, just got a lot of family stuff going on. Um, me and the wife doing stuff. We date nights and stuff like that. Just spending more time with family. Like, off season is the time where, hey, I'm spending more time with family. Especially because, you know, my kids are getting to the point where they want to do stuff. Um, You know, they got a lot going on, dance, football, want to play sports, want to be active. I got to make sure they're doing their homework, got to get the books, stuff like that, too. So I'm going to go live. I'll go live. Glenn, be sure to hit the notifications. I'll probably be live, I'm thinking Sunday, uh, possibly. So I'm thinking Sunday I might do something where I come live and just kind of talk. I may do a mock on Sunday. I want to do my own mock. Um, we'll do some mock drafts. I'll do one. Maybe we do a trade one. Maybe we do one where we stay put. Um, so I definitely want to do some mocks. We'll get that cracking. Joe says, why aren't you sleeping yet? Bro, it's okay. I'm going to get about four hours. Um, I'm going to get about four hours of sleep, get up, get on the road, um, and just get there and be there the whole day. We got a game at 9 a.m. We got a game at 10 a.m. And we got a game at 11 a.m. If they win pool play, you keep on playing. Um, Jeremiah, love your show, CBD3A. Hey, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Do me a favor. Share it with one or two people you know, and it just helps the channel grow. Um, if you could just send the link out to somebody and be like, yo, check this guy out. He's pretty cool. Subscribe. I would appreciate it. It means a lot, bro means a lot. I know all my people here are, are holding me down. Even the Jets fans in the building, even the Jets fans. If Dolphins draft a late round QB, which guy are you picking in what round? Ooh, a good question. Um, sixth or seventh round would be the, the earliest I pick one. It would either be Joe Milton or it would be um, dang, I keep forgetting my guy's name. Uh, man, I just had it on the tip of my tongue too. Jordan Travis. So I, I think, I, cause I think Jordan Travis is a good player. I just think he needs a good coach and a good offense, a good system to mold him. He's a little small, right? But I think Joe Milton or Jordan Travis will be guys I target in the sixth or seventh round to just come in and be QB two or three. Uh, maybe you just QB three behind um, whoever we have, Skyler. Um, you know, people love Skyler out here. Where Pete at? <laughs> people love Skyler. Um, but yeah, I would say Jordan Travis or Joe Milton in the sixth or seventh round. Uh, TD said, hey, TD had the nerve to say that he would pick Tiger Viola. Uh, talk about Loa in the in the seventh round or the sixth round. I was like, "What? You gonna pick his brother? You already don't like that man. Now you gonna pick his brother? And you think that's the right play?" I was I was appalled. Y'all gotta go watch that show. Y'all gotta go watch that Miami Dolphins roundtable show with me, TD, and Doug. It's always fun. It's always a good time. We did a mock draft on there tonight. Um, do your boy a favor, like Glenn says, and hit that dang like button help bro out. I appreciate you, Glenn. I appreciate all the support. Um, if you want to donate to the channel, you can do that by becoming a member or just clicking on the dollar sign in the chat and doing a super chat. But man, I appreciate y'all. If y'all just hit the like button for me and share with a couple of people, that is enough. That is really all I need. And I'm going to keep getting out here and doing my thing. I'm going to keep getting out here and giving you the breakdowns, the film breakdowns, showing you what I see, no fancy lingo, no assistance, just me in the in the lab putting in the work, showing you what I see, bro. I don't have to get on here and yell about what I do and how I do it. I play high school football, play college football, got the credentials, coach for 10 years, been in the lab, West Orange High School, Jones High School, 
and Lima High School in Seminole County. So I put in the work, man. I put in the work. I earned it. So um, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hey, do your boy a favor. Punch the like button on your way out. And you already know what it is. It's CB83 for another Venn Steak Friday. And your boy is out. See ya. Came from the bottom, that's foreign. I swear that I'm up for the sun in the morning. Oof, hey, I got a flex. I need a Nike bag, give me the check. I need the money and power, respect. But I promise I'm repping the oak to the dead. Hey, oof, I sold him out of my way. I don't got nothing to say. Yeah.